Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Mount Carmel Area High School Red Tornado Football. I'm Bob Else, along with Warren Altimore and Wayne Brokenshire, bringing you tonight's game from the Silver Bowl. The Red Tornadoes host the Shemokin Indians. The 100th anniversary game, and we're here to see it, guys. Well, like, like this game needs any more hype than it already has <laughs> on a regular basis, but yes, we commemorate 100 years of football with Shemokin area now, or of course Mount Carmel area. This began, it's the second longest running uh, football streak we, or, uh, series we played Ashland actually first, the week before I guess we played Shemokin. So this goes back into the 1890s where this began at. So really a, a great time for both schools tonight and, and a great crowd out here. And of course, Mount Carmel area coming off that big win with Southern Columbia. Uh, last week in the Shemokin area Indians being, and I believe they feel they were mildly upset by, by uh, Blue Mountain, and I, that was the consensus I got from everybody that saw the game that they probably should have won the thing and right. they just didn't pull it out at the end. So two, uh, two schools with, with, a, with a good record this, this year, and of course the records mean nothing. We say it every year, and it's true. This is, this is it. This is what everybody looks for every year, and, and now you're at it. Big crowd. Here they come. And the Red Tornadoes take the field. Shemokin was out here already, and... Uh, They'll meet the refs and go out for the toss at the center of the field. I guess we should go over with it being a, a local game here, Wayne. We'll go over some starting lineups early. And uh, I'll cover the Red Tornado offense here. Starting at left tackle for the Red Tornado, 72, Jamie Vokler. At guard, number 71, Dan Daukas. At center, number 75, Jonathan Else. At guard, number 58, Mike Sinkovich. At tackle, number 77, Chris Shue. At tight end, number 80, Chris Cuff. At split end, number 29, Josh Paracella. At the slot back, number 27, Matt Van Doren. And number 8, Mike Smith. At quarterback, number 5, Nick Sebus. At fullback, 28, Al Bailey. And at tailback, 25, John Veach. Centers, the, at the center of the field, the captains are meeting. We'll go over the captains right now. 60, Jason Malakoski, number 58, Mike Sinkovich, 71, Dan Daukas, and number 75, Jonathan Else. Also, the, another captain for the Red Tornadoes, number 80, Chris Cuff. Shemokin captains, I got 75 there for sure, which is Chris Yoder. 18, Phil Farrow. Phil Farrow, 76 also for Shemokin, is Brian Carnuccio. And 75, Chris Yoder. Uh, you need the guy in the end here, right? Barry Stoud, number 74. Okay, so we got the captains out there. I can't see him because Jonathan's standing in front of him. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even tell there's a guy on the other side of him. <laughs> Flip of the coin. Toss was won by Shemokin. They elected to receive, so the Red Tornadoes will be on defense. Shemokin will receive. Go over uh, the Indians' offense there, Wayne. Here we go. On tight end, we have Tony Treese, number 37. Tackle, 76, Brian Carnuccio. The guard, number 75, Chris Yoder. Center, Dan Jones, number 78. The right guard, Chris Christian, number 56. Tackle, right tackle, number 68. Rich Tasker, number uh, 74, Barry Stout. We have the flanker, number 10, Bill Wetzel. The split end, number 84, Dennis Kodak. Uh, fullback, number 90, uh, Nate Rhodes. Their ta uh, the tailback, tailback, number yep. 18, uh, Phil Farrell, who's really done an outstanding job for them this year. And number 11, their quarterback, Nick Griffiths. Well, we kept Warren shut up for the first 10 minutes, didn't yeah, we, that, by giving the starting lineup. The last that time that's tough. happening. That's it, guys. I've had it. He was <laughs> drooling. He was ready to explode. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at these two teams, uh, you know, uh, against the Tornadoes, like last week we've seen that uh, uh, Southern couldn't match up. But you look at Shemokin's size against uh, the Tornadoes, these two teams match up man to man. Mike Sinkovich with the opening kickoff, sails it to about the 14-yard line, taken by number, tackle made by 27, Van Doren, also 88, Shellhammer, and 41, Mickey Moroz. Phil Farrow was the Farrow the carrier. ball carrier. Yes, he was. Of course, again, uh, as we begin the game, Shemokin's first offensive play 
it will always be, as it will be for the rest of this year, is how will Shemokin area match up with the speed at Mount Carmel area. That will determine, I believe, again, the outcome of this game. There you go, uh, Bob, during the warm-ups. Now they have uh, Tasker. Tasker's in, out. At, right. in that tackle now. Tasker, 6'8", 330 pounds at right tackle for the Indians. Tries it off the left side. Farrow, the ball carrier. Or Nate Rhodes, the ball. Farrow, the ball carrier. Stopped on the right side over there by Dalkus. Also helped out by 54, uh, Jeff Evans. And 65, Jeremiah Brown. So basically you're telling me that this Tasker guy is in two different zip codes at the same time. Oh, yes, he is. My goodness, look at the size of that guy. Where do they get these? Every year they get one like oh. that. What are they doing? Where do they get these guys at? Always have some big players. Second down, nine yards to go for the Indians. Quick pass. Great reception by 22, Shikatano. And they're down to about the 41-yard line. Right over the head of... of uh, Carcello of, of, defending that back right. there. Yeah. No, but right over the head of, of Shikatano, and he yeah. caught it over the top yeah. of his helmet. Nice catch yeah. by, nice throw. by Shikatano. Shikatano is the freshman in the football game. Of course, we hadn't seen him before. Uh, the guy to watch, of course, is the quarterback. If there's anybody that has, has the real uh, experience and the real savvy back there right now, and I'm not taking anything away from the rest of the battle, but Griffiths is truly the, the go-to guy in this offense. He's going to have to make it all happen tonight. First down and 10 for the Indians. Tries Farrow off the left side. Daukas with the initial hit, still on his feet for a nine yard gain. Hard running by Farrow. I think the finish off tackle was 47, Steve Sinkovich. Shemokin facing a second down and short yardage. Now that's an inside, inside Sally play, yep. is all that is. And that's, that's coming second, right at you. That's the second time. Now, what you're going to see, Farrow. Farrow's not going to be the Tony Verano that we saw in the last couple of years where he has the speed and the cutting ability. Farrow's the big boy. He's going to carry the ball. He's going to run right over you to pick up that extra yardage. Tries it right up the middle of the roads. Big hit by number one, Terry Meyer. Might be close to a first down, but Meyer shot in there and made a great tackle. Of course, Rhodes, <laughs> that's a 230-pound yeah. fullback, fullback, folks. Fullback, so you're right. He's... He's bringing a load with him when he gets to the line of scrimmage. He's another guy you want to watch for. I mean, uh, size-wise, that these two teams match up very, very yeah, well. Yeah. They're, now, they're, aside from Tasker, and, I, and Tasker would be a, an asterisk, I think, on any line in, in high school football, but f aside from him, they are slightly smaller, believe it or not, than, than uh, Southern Columbia was. Uh, across the line on both sides of the ball, you're going to find Schmokin area comes in a little smaller, but probably a little quicker, I think, than the Tigers did. But their backfield is also a little bit bigger, I think, than what Southern. Yes, what well, I would definitely agree with Rhodes back yeah. there. And again, with Griffiths, uh, yeah, a little different, a little different kind of backfield, backfield. I think that you're going to see uh, this year, this week, than you did last week. So, uh, a, a strong team. Shemokin area is a good football team, and Mount Carmel area needs to, to recognize that early on here, or they're going to be in trouble. Third down and inches, 10:45 left in the first quarter. Rhodes in the backfield, out of a wing T. Fakes it to Rhodes, was going to try throwing, now carries the ball himself and gets a first down after about a two-yard gain. Uh, Chris Cuff in on the tackle along with 54, Jeff Evans. I don't know if that was a design play like I, that or if maybe, maybe he was supposed to look and see. Well, he's he probably sending deep, uh, running on a fly pattern down the sidelines. If he was open, throw the yeah. ball. If not, it's an odd, It's an the, odd pattern for right. short yardage, though. You, know, you wouldn't normally see that. Well, he, they well caught, 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 uh, yeah, caught he's probably surprise. figuring he had he has another down. Yeah, that's what I think. But I mean, you, you could also ha lose yardage pretty easily oh, yeah, on that kind right. of a play. On a, on a short yardage, sometimes you don't want to take a chance of losing two or three yards either on a sack. So far, very quick opening plays for Shimokan Indians. Chicatano comes in motion to the right side. Griffiths back to pass. Big rush from Dan Dalfus. Big play at the 41 yard line, and Cuffey was there last week. Give Dalkus yeah. credit this week. He was in on the charge. Well, you know, looking back on the films, if, if you don't watch them, 
uh, those backside uh, defensive ends are going to hurt you every time. That play was you, dead from the start. I mean, oh, it was, there was no way he was going to get away from that. Well, you're right. Uh, you know, Dalkins was a, with a full-out sprint there, and you don't have someone protecting the backside of you. You're I, I don't somebody. know. Now, I don't know whether they, that's designed to let him come free because it didn't look like anybody was, was making an attempt. I mean, it, it seemed like he was supposed to be let run free. Now, I don't know if they thought he was going to drop off or right. what he was going to do, but I, I can't believe they desi designed that play. Because if they have, they don't want to run it again like that. He was he was there in a second. He was on top of them. Shotgun formation for the Indians. Chicatano comes in motion to the right. Snaps back to Griffiths. It's a screen pass to Farrow. Big rush from Terry Meyer. And the Red Tornado defense swarms over there. Paracella also 26, Lantini. And twenty and number fifty-eight, Mike Sinkovich. Yeah. You, you watch I mean, Terry. You watch Terry Myers Meyer on that play. What you will find is he was keying his man the whole time, and as soon as he stopped to turn and look for the ball, Terry put out in a full-out sprint just to get there. Well, Meyer, you know Meyer fools you. He doesn't look like he's real fast, and again, it's just looking at him. But I'll tell you what, when he closes on him, yeah. it's all over. He he truly does close to the ball extremely well. Third down, twenty-one yards to go. Griffiths on that quick pass again, over the head of everybody, and Paracella covers very well. Fourth down and 21 yards to go. A punting situation for the Indians. Big stand by, by Big Red defense that time. They were being pushed around a little bit, and then out of nowhere, two big losses for the Shemokin offense, and boom, they're in a punting situation. So that's how quickly Mount Carmel area's defense can control you and if they really put their mind to it. Deep for the Red Tornadoes, five, Nick Sebus, and 25, Jonathan Veach. Punts an end over end in the direction of Sebus, bounces on the 15-yard line, and will be down by Matt Thomas on the 10. First down and 10, Red Tornadoes from the 10-yard line. Well, it'd be interesting to see the offense <laughs> this week, as each week we've seen a little bit of different right. offense come out and meet us. Uh, I think last week the offense had kind of a, kind of a coming out party for, for everybody. Uh, we saw a lot of formations, a lot of different plays being run, and consequently tons of yardage piled up against uh, Southern Columbia. So it'll be interesting to see what we do as we start this game off tonight. Veach and Bailey in the I formation. Veach off the right side. Nice tackle made by 44. Was it, or is it number four? No, it's 44. 40, 44, right, Mike right. Spears. Spearsy with a good tackle. Spears was actually questionable, I guess, for this game up and right up until kickoff. We hadn't known whether he was going to play or not, but he is in the lineup. And, and as they said he at would, Supper Club last night, it pretty much takes, like, you know, having your arm or leg tore off not yeah. to play in this football game. So. Well, even it, for Mike Spears, he, he, that would be a big loss if he didn't play. There's an excellent athlete out there. Second down, nine yards to go. Tries Bailey up the middle, and that one is stuffed by the right tackle, number 75, in on the stop, Chris Yoder. Also 76 getting up off the bottom of the pile, Brian Carnuccio. Third down, eight yards to go, deep in tornado territory. Back to pass, looks it. Paracella, incom is it Paracella? Incomplete yeah. at about the 45-yard line. Fourth down and a punting situation for the Red Tornadoes. Tough defensive stand that time by the, by the Indians as Mount Carmel area now punting right at their end zone. Steve Sinkovich in punt formation. Terry Meyer, the long snap. Snaps back, good snap. Kicks away. Taken by Farrell on the 47 yard number line. 10, Wetzel. And he slips after a good rush from Lentini. Wetzel, uh, number 10. Wetzel, number 10. Oh, sorry. Thank you. You're welcome. You keep me straight on those Shemokin guys. <laughs> He's got them. He's, this is his one game. Let him have it. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. That's okay. 722 left in the first and. Red Tornado defense has to dig in again. Yeah, good field position for the Indians to begin this drive at. They're sitting right outside the Mount Carmel area's 45-yard line. So, Keep 
Farrow goes in motion to the left side. Griffiths rolls to that side, gets the rush. Matt Thomas gets the ball for about a five-yard gain, and that's that little quick pass over. The, it's like a slant pass coming that's, from the far right side. That's all Griffiths is going to throw. He's going to throw his short ones. He's going to hit the open man. Uh, nothing, nothing really deep unless it's obvious that it is there. But, Second uh, down four, Wayne. Chicatano out around the right side, finds some running room. Nice tackle made by number 80, Chris Cuff. First down. Real close to a first down, isn't it? It's definitely yeah, a first, first yeah, down at yards. about the 32-yard line. Smoking area looking crisp on offense right now. Nice little quick plays yeah, happening right. just to get that four and five yards, but they are there. Their key there is their first down play. They pick up that that first, or second and five now, and they have a little bit more to more to play around with in the uh, playbook. So this one right here, Wayne's the one you're looking at. This is it. Out of the shotgun formation, Nate Rhodes moves over to be the long snapper out of the shotgun. Snap back to Griffiths. Looks to the right side. Big play by Chris Cuff that time to knock the ball down. Good rush by number one, Terry Meyer. If you take a look at all of their patterns, they're short, quick, three-step patterns back, and they're getting everybody out into the zone. They're, they're flooding all the zones on the flat and in the center with everybody that they possibly can. And somebody's got to be open. Good scouting, I guess, right? Because we've talked, the way you score on Mount Carmel or even move the ball are those quick plays. You, sure. can't, you can't take a play a long time to develop or this defense will tear you apart. 6.04 left in the first quarter, no score. Griffiths rolls, now looks down the middle and a big rush by the Red Ooh. Tornadoes. Finished off 47. by 47, Steve Who Sinkovich. Else? Who else puts hits like that on? The hit man was in. Well, you got Mike Sinkovich in there first to break it up. Then you got Jason Malakowski to stop the, the movement past the line of scrimmage. And then you got Steve driving him back for a three-yard loss. Now, you see, that that just that just flew in the face of everything we just said. They, they, they threw some short passes, right. some quick rollouts. At that time, that was a slow-developing quarterback right. drop-back kind of thing. And boom. they And it's funny. The first series d d disintegrated in the exact same manner. You can't do it. They don't, they're not going to have enough time to let him drop back. And, and look around. He's got to go look at the receiver and, and get the ball off. Third down, 13 yards to go. Single coverage on the left side with Spears. Griffiths runs back. Big rush. Hit by Dalkus and Cuff. Danny Dalkus, two sacks tonight, doing a great job. Yeah, but the guy, the guy that Cuff was the guy that jumped up, yeah. and that was that was the end of the play. When he jumped up and blocked Griffiths' vision, that was it. He because he had he couldn't see his coming receiver. from the right, right. defensive end. And, and then he was done. That was over then. Well, if you haven't seen the pattern of these offensive plays by Schmoken, they're isolating Paracel over on, yeah, the, they right, are. on the right hand side and throwing. That was down with that Spears way. that yeah. time, Wayne. Snaps back. Farrell's punt taken by. Oh, bounces over Sebus' head and into the end zone. Good, Good play Good by Sebus. That's what you like to see. That's, that's an intelligent play right there. Now Carmel area takes over at their own 20 yard line which at 4.35 in the first quarter is their best field position. Right. So again, Mount Carmel's defense has left or started up where they left off with last week. Absolutely suffocating defense right now. They just don't allow you to do much. And now Mount Carmel offense comes out here for the second time this evening, and we'll see what they can do. Split backs for the Red Tornadoes, Bailey and Veach. Sebus. Gives it to Veach off the right side. Find a little hole and Spears tackles him on about the 25 yard line. Good tackle by Spears. Spears a very key point in this Shimokan defense, isn't he guys? Well, you know, he's got him there at the, at the corner playing that linebacker spot. And uh, you know, we know Mike Spears from, uh, from the basketball end of the court. Right. Very quick, uh, very strong player. And, and like I said, that, that would be a loss if he, if he couldn't play tonight. Second down, five yards to go. Veach off the left side, and that one stuffed in there by number 18, Farrow. <laughs> also on the bottom of the pile, 
number 76, Brian Carnuccio. Wetzel down there was, was going to have a discussion with the bus, and apparently he's never been run over by a bus before because <laughs> I don't know if he wants to be having that kind of a conversation right now. Split backs again for the Red Tornadoes. Sebas to pass. Look to Paracel, has him incomplete at the 40-yard line. I think, I think the problem there is Josh stopped. That, he was so wide open, I think he couldn't believe it. And he saw, uh, I think Nick turned in the corner. I didn't know whether he thought he was going to run the ball or what, but he was wide open. Sinkovich in punt formation for the Red Tornadoes. Meyer is the long snapper. Terry Meyer, the long snapper, snaps back, kicks away. Taken by Shikitano, he trips at about the 42 and is finished off by 41, Mickey Morose. First down Indians from about the 48-yard uh, line. No score. The annual coal bucket game, and there's no bigger traditional game than this one in the state of Pennsylvania, guys. They're talking that, that it may be one of the longest running trophy games in Pennsylvania really? right now. Be, uh, the, the bucket began being exchanged in 1951. Tries oh. Nate Rhodes, big rush by 47, Steve Sinkovich. Ooh. Finished off by 80, Chris oh. Cuff, but boy, did Sinko come in yeah. there quick. What? Yeah, that can, that can change your whole complexion right there yeah. when you get hit like that. See, I, don't, I know Rhodes is a big kid, but I, I don't think he's going to get much utilization tonight. He's not going to have the kind See, of speed to move around it much. It looked there that he was, it was more of a slant rather than a straight dive type right. play, and he'd be more of a straight dive. Yeah, he, he just doesn't have that kind of speed right now. Quick pass, and again over to the right side. Oh, Shikatano over his hands there. That was a touchdown, guys. Oh, yep. over his hands. He had one hand on that. Third down, 13 yards to go. Well, so far tonight, they're going to have to paint a bullseye in Paracella's number right. because it's yeah. the only place they're going. They, they want Paracella right now. And so far, he's saying no. And, and you know, they're flooding the other side. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, they're making it so obvious that, uh, and they're putting different people out there on, on Paracella. Timeout called? Shimoka. <clears throat> Timeout called by the Indians. Talk a little bit about Supper Club. Yep. Big one, and tomorrow night's another one coming up. All right, for the Allentown Central Catholic game, of course, it cannot, cannot tell you enough. If you want to come down and just have dinner with us and meet some of these kids, of course, we're bringing five young men and uh, two cheerleaders every week now, so you get a chance to talk with them and, and break some bread with those people. And, of course, the coaching staff is there to discuss the game pass, which in this case would be the Shemokin area game, and, of course, the game coming up against uh, the Vikings and Allentown Central Catholic. So... For, for just, I mean, it, you get there, it starts at 6.30. Uh, usually by quarter to eight, you're done. So it's not a real right. long night. The kid's got to get the pride night and all. So it's really a, a nice affair. Great food, of course, at the Matucci's. I mean, there's, I can't, there's nothing I can say that, that would make the Matucci's sound any better than they already do. But great food and just a good time all around. So if you want to come down, again, you do not have to join. It's not a, not a thing where we keep your attendance and make sure you come every week. You can stop in for, for one night or stop in for all nights of, of the season. It's up to you, but it's really a good time. 2.38 left on the clock in the first quarter. No score. Shemokin third down and 13 from the 45-yard line. Griffiths fakes to Rhodes. Big rush from 47, Steve Sinkovich. And again, if you, if you, you know, everybody's looking at the quarterback. And where he was going, he was looking at Mike Spears over on the left-hand side. They are determined to connect on one of those passes yet tonight. I'll tell you what, they can be determined until they turn blue, but they're, they've got to pass protect better right, right now because it's they are not. And that time, this is the second time I thought we knew the play. One time before, and I believe we knew what play that was too, the way we, where we rushed it. Farrow in punt formation for the Indians. Snaps back. It's a fake punt? No, it's a punt. Yeah. 
Well, now he's. I, I'm assuming he's going to have guys downfield. He well, he did. He waited. He somebody should be downfield too soon. I'm not. I'm not sure how. Nope. That, how do you do that? I'm, I'm a little confused about what that was. There had to have been people downfield yeah. on that punt. Mount Carmel area, of course, has been racked with bad field position. And again, now they take a ball over on their own 15. So they have not been out of the out of the corner of their own end zone so far this evening. And the, the first quarter is winding down with a minute 51 to go as they snap the ball. Now the Red Tornadoes come out with the split backfield against Bar Paracella split far left. Bailey and Veach pitches to Veach, takes it out around the right side, now cuts back, finds some running room, and gets it out to a first down at about the 25-yard line. Nice run by John that time. Of course, if we talk about coming out parties, oh. last night is his coming out party. I mean, 240 yards yes. rushing last week. And and I, you know, I don't know if anybody realized how close he really was to that record. Yep, he was know? right there. So uh, again, and, and remember, he's a sophomore, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, you've got, you've got a, a bunch of games to watch this kid perform. So just sit back and enjoy him. Veach goes in motion. Sebus gonna take it to the right side, finds a little running room, makes a move on number four, Matt Thomas, and he's tackled at about the 29-yard line. Now, see that exact move last week got him around the corner. That right. time, Thomas held him and didn't, didn't get faked enough to, to not be stopped. So I give credit a lot to Thomas. You don't want to be standing flat-footed with Sebas coming around the corner on you because he's going to kill you. That was a nice play that time by Thomas. I think Brian Carnuccio sort of got, got he was Yeah, he did. He, he came right dead. in. Yeah, he, yes, made, he, he made did. the arc a lot, a lot uh, bigger Deeper. than it should have been yeah. to start off with, and that's, that's what helped. But two good plays there by two good football players. Flags on the play, and we'll have a double shift here against the Red Tornadoes. Five-yard penalty, bring it back, second down, 10 yards to go. Second down, 11 yards to go. 35 seconds and counting in the first quarter, no score from the Silver Bowl. Big shift on that formation for the Red Tornadoes. Gives it to Veach off the right side. And again, the backs didn't get set. Whether it's a touchdown or where they run them down, it doesn't matter which one's coming back yes, against the Red Tornadoes. Back. And Veach is tackled at about the 24-yard line, but this one's coming back. Nice run by Veach, my thought. Yeah. That was that one of those back? shift plays again where you got to yeah. wait till everybody gets set before yeah. we can run it. Yep. Nice play, though, really was. Pretty play by Veach, and that had nothing to do with the shift. He just ran that a, a good way, but... Again, I, as, soon as, they, as soon as they snapped the ball, I knew that I knew they did it. I didn't know if they, if they saw it, yep. but the guy that came to our close side here was not all the way set down, and you have to be. Well, that's the end of the first quarter, and we'll see them move it out here. And again, that goes back, I think, to the quarterback. He still needs to be able to watch what Everybody. they're doing. Right. Actually, the quarter can end on an offensive penalty, so the Red Tornadoes will run one more play here, Warren. Yeah, if they, you know, and that's I think, the truth. Right? He's supposed to look up and down the line to make sure that everybody can end on a defensive set. penalty, not on an oh, offensive Oh, that's right, penalty. defensive, right. Defensive. Thank you. Give us a chance, ladies and gentlemen, here at the Dino. No, there has to be one now. more play, Warren. I don't know. I thought it was a defensive penalty myself. Uh -uh. Well, we'll see. Is Warren right or is Bob right? Oh, really? Now it's going to be what? a competition. Hey, you, you brought it up. Well, my, my question is, is the ref right? <laughs> All right. Second down and long is going to be run here right now. Well, I guess that makes him right now, doesn't it? <laughs> That's pretty much what he's doing. Well, let's take a few seconds here for Bob just to rub my nose. Go ahead. <laughs> So this play is actually in limbo. In limbo. <laughs> but it does count. It does count. It does count. It, it's in limbo on the clock. 
Big shift again by the Red Tornadoes. Everybody set. Fake to Veach. Looks downfield. Now Sebas is going to tuck the ball and run with it. Finds him right outside. Good block from Sinkovich. He's at the 35-yard line and close first to down. a first oh, down. Yeah, got a first made down. It. Yep. That ball's over the line. Yeah, that'll be a first down. A nice run yep. by Sebas that time. Good block by 58, Mike Sinkovich. Yeah, everybody and was paying attention to what he was to what he was doing. <laughs> All right, Warren, all yours. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, we remind you that this is WKMC-TV, broadcasting directly from the campus of Mount Carmel Area High School on a microwave signal WLX267. We are an instructional fixed television service, and you are catching us on a Wednesday night, 8 o'clock, channel 13 in the service electric cable system. Public announcement, we would like to make, especially to the fans at Shimokan area. This is written by the big man. I'm going to read this word for word. I'll get in trouble. <laughs> WKMC has had quite a few calls concerning the replays of Shimokan area football, usually seen on our channel every Thursday evening. These tapes have, have been supplied by Shimokan area to WKMC TV in the past years. And, of course, Wayne was actually the guy who brought them to us. And then we would replay them over our microwave signal so you guys could see them. WKMC has been informed that this year Shimokan area school will be unable to supply Mount Carmel area with a video of their games for replay. This means we are unable to provide a Thursday evening broadcast of Shimokan area football. We apologize, and I know the people at Shimokan area do too, and hopefully maybe next year we can get that back on for you, but that's the reason that you are not seeing your own team on a Thursday night. Thanks, Warren. Anytime. First down and 10, Red Tornadoes from the 35-yard line. Bailey goes in motion. Fake to Veach, roll by Sebas, big rush by 75, has Bailey breaking, gets the ball on the 32-yard line, first down at the 24. Nice pass, Whoa. Bailey Bailey did a great adjustment to the ball, he really did, he started to see where it was coming from, and boom, great play, Sebas under pressure from the backside, Chris Yoder. stood his ground, and big let rush it, by let Chris Yoder. Like Chris Yoder had, had a bullseye right on Sebas' back, and that's a little bit of maturity on Sebas' end this year that we have seen that he waited until the very last minute before he released that ball, and he still took a big hit from Chris Yoder. Now the power backfield comes in for the Red Tornadoes. Terry Meyer, Steve Zinkovich in front of Jonathan Veach. Gives it to Veach, behind the blocking of Zinkovich. Gain of about maybe a yard. 84 Dennis Kodak, 84. Nice, nice tackle by 84. Bailey comes into the backfield now, gives Jonathan Veach a rest. Definitely deserves it after that long run that was, was called. <laughs> that was a great so, run, too. Oh, tires your legs out. Out of the power formation. Sebas fakes to Bailey, takes the ball himself. Oh, cut back outside and gets only about a one-yard gain. Nice play that time by 70. Is it 76 or Car 70? Carnuccio? Carnuccio. Yeah, yeah, Carnuccio made the play. Made him cut back outside. Yeah. And stayed his ground that time. Took on the block by Sinkovich. That was a good block by Sinkovich, but he, he played through it and really got uh, Sebas tangled up and brought him down. That was a nice play that time by well, the big man. If you watch there, I don't know if uh, Phil, Phil Farrow is keying on, on uh, Nick Sebas, but he mirrored him all the way across the, the line of scrimmage and then filled the hole. Mm-hmm. Really? They're going to flood the pattern this time, guys. You got Nick Chesney coming out to the right, Paracel to the left, power backs to the right side of the Red Tornado offense. No backs in the backfield. Looks at Paracel on the left, in and out of his hands in the end zone. Nice play that time. Paracel had the, had the man beat yes, right at the did. goal line. He, he got past him. And they're going to watch for Chesney here, too. Nobody. Yeah. Nobody covered Nick Chesney going to the right side of the end zone. Yeah, what, what you saw there is that uh, Paracel, as he got by the, the defender there, the defender turned around. He rotated, and he didn't never saw the ball coming. Nice pass. Fourth that down, nine run. yards to go. That was a pretty pass that putting, time. That I'll was. tell you what. There's, there's three plays right there that Nick has put that ball right on the money. Chesney stays in and takes the tight end position right now. Fourth down, nine yards to go. Sebas, back to pass. Big rush. Looks at Veach, but they only gets one yard on the play. Shemokin takes over, first down and 10. 
And little fisticuff going on. No flags called. 9.53 left in the first half, and the longer the Indians stay in it, the more this game will become a tight one, Wayne. Uh, as usual, you know, Warner's right. You throw all the records out. When this game comes around, you don't care what anybody did up to that point. If this is this is a tough game. This, you know, this bucket means a lot to everybody, you know, in both communities. Big defensive situation here for the uh, Red Tornadoes. They, gotta, they were held there on fourth down. Now they have to hold their ground. Griffiths on that quick pass out there. Chesney covering him. Intercepted by Nick Chesney. Takes the ball down the sideline. Cuts it back at about the 25, 19-yard line. Nick Chesney all the way. The All-Stater does his job at cornerback. I'll tell you what, I I've got to start the question. Any team that throws at him from here on right. in. I'm You're serious. Right. I mean, I, I know I know this is high school and, and every kid is beatable at some point, but Nick Chesney so far is unbeatable. But he, he is perfect. Here's the thing. We we saw the game last week and he had I don't know how many interceptions, how many block passes that he yeah. had. And, and you're running a good pattern on the opposite side of the field. And, he and now catch. all of a sudden, you throw it over there. And he, he looks so awkward turning his body to catch right. that ball. And he comes That's up with a, it every time. Yeah, I mean, I, you, can, you can understand why he's all state. I mean, he, oh, he's proven definitely. that to you now in the oh. first three games. Just an amazing football player, really is. But what a, what a uh, just a sense for the ball. You know I mean? A kid can be fast, a kid can be tough, but not everybody can have that. Just that innate sense. And I said that last week. You look at him and you see the way he does things and you say, coach's son. And, and that's exactly what it is. He's just he's just something that he's picked up over years and years with yep. his dad and just hearing things and watching coverages and stuff. But Now, here's the other thing you might want to think about, right? He has a number of interceptions last week. He has one already tonight. I would start, start thinking, put him as a, a split end or a wide receiver on offense. This kid has hands. I mean, yes, he's he all over the ball. He, he, he just is. He just has, you know, that knack to turn. Defense is very, very difficult because you have to turn when you see the receiver looking for the ball. And you have to turn and catch it. First down and 10 for the Red Tornadoes from the 19-yard line. Sebas pitches back to Veach. Out around the outside. Tries to cut back, stays on his feet to the 15, and down to the 14. Nifty little run yeah. Yeah. by Jonathan Veach because there was, because there was, there was nothing there. There was nothing there. I'll tell you what, you have to give credit to the Schmokin defense. They're, they're, they're swarming defense. They're over very quickly. They're a fast, lateral moving team. Jonathan Veach, that six yards all by himself. Excellent run. 9-17 left in the first half. First threat here from the Red Tornadoes thanks to a Nick's, Nick Chesney interception. Veach off the left side to about the <laughs> eight yard line, big hit. Phil Farrell. Farrell was on oh. the hit. Yeah, did somebody, 84 have him? 84 yeah. had 84 him. was the other guy there. Kodak, Kodak, Kodak but uh, Phil Farrell. Put a hit on him. Kodak's playing a pretty tough yes, game, too. He is. We're seeing his numbers show up on almost every defensive play, so he's having a big uh, first half anyway here. Third down, one yard to go. The power backs come in into the I formation for the Red Tornadoes. Terry Meyer and Steve Sinkovich with Bailey in the eye. Quarterback sneak. Go to Bailey. Off the right side. It'll be close to a first down. Good call, Wayne. That's where they mark him at. You see, you, well, watch their, what was open. their defensive right, right, lineup. Right. They have a big gap First there. down, Red Tornadoes. That was a good call, yeah, too. Yeah, it was a good call. But that might be something to look at. If you, if you look at their defensive lineup, they're leaving a big gap there uh, between the guard and the center. First down, nine yards to go. Goal to go for the Red Tornadoes. 8-12 left in the first half. Bailey and Veach in the eye. Veach off the right side. And you're right, Wayne. They, they came in. Oh, that's going to be a, a yeah. late hit on the head, I think. Yeah. I don't know what. That, that was. Uh, I don't know what we were thinking about on that one. Yeah, that, it's been a few times a, a little late hit. Right. It's just been, it's been close, but it's been on the edge. Right. But uh, they got caught this time. 
Yeah, that, that was on. I mean, this is just such a big game. They're already yeah, pinned down there. Right. there. Got to use your head. You got to do that. And plus, you're not in, in the most friendly confines when you get down to the, right. down in to end, the uh, end zone creature, bleachers down there. The creature bleachers. They're going to tear you apart down there when you get close to them. They are, they are fans down there. First down and goal to go for the Red Tornadoes from the four-yard line. Bailey off the left side, no gain. <laughs> Second down, six yards to go. Starting to become fans up here, we're rooting. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> I'm trying to cover for you two guys right now. Second and five for Big Red. Going to try outside again. Beach got it this time to the four to the three yard line. Third down and goal to go from the three. That's three times tonight that I saw Jonathan break through and he's trying to push somebody out of the way to, to, to get downfield, to look for that hole. Good tackle made by 44, Mike Spears. Seeing some really good outside containment right now oh, from the Indians. I said they have very, very quick lateral movement here. They're, they're linebackers. Well, plus they're lined up out there, too. Oh, well, see, That's yeah, helping. Right, yeah. <laughs> now, this, this probably is going to the left. You want to try to center this ball. Beach to the left. <laughs> and it only goes for one yard. Fourth down and goal to go. What a stand by the Indians here. Timeout, Big Red. Yep. Well, now you, you got a double-edged sword going here now. One, if you get stopped, you don't get any points. But two, if you get stopped, it is one big mo for the Indians. And they're You're already pretty well riled up yes, over they there. Are. They're on the war path as we, as we speak over on that side of the field. So Coach Whitey wants to make sure everything's going to be exactly the way he wants it on this fourth down play and try to get into the end zone. But well, we went right, left, right. No, we went left, left right, right, left. left. OK. So I they'll think, work on a play here. I think we're going up the middle. <laughs> they're, they're tough on the outside, plus they're overplaying the outside. You know, right. that's, that's exactly what's happening, but sooner or later, that's going to come back to haunt you in the middle. 5.59 left in the first half. No score from the Silver Bowl. The battle for the coal bucket. And so far, everything has been the way it was hyped up to be yeah. through this whole and week. This nobody understands game. that out of this area, right. though. Nobody out of this area understands that it doesn't matter what the records are. It doesn't matter who's ranked where. This is a big game in this area, whether it's played on Thanksgiving or whether it's played the third game of the year, as some papers have gone to say it doesn't mean as much on Thanksgiving. Sebus rolls to his right. He's got to take it in himself. Touchdown, Nick Sebus and the Red Tornadoes. Now, there, there, there's speed in, in, right. in the play there. Now, they defended it well, but they're, they're trying to pay attention to a lot of things, and you give him one step, and that's all he needed was a step to the outside, right. and boom, he was gone. It was he nice blocking, nice seal blocking to his side, but still, that extra step does it every time. And again, what they were looking for was the, was the short pass out into the corner someplace, and, you know, you're not keying on the quarterback, and he had no one in front of him. Yeah. Mike Sinkovich in to attempt the extra point. Snaps back from Els to Paracel. It's down. The kick's up. And it's good. With 5.53 left in the first half, the score, the Red Tornado 7, the Indians nothing. Well, that's, that's how you win big games. you got to capitalize on a Shemokin area mistake. And, of course, the big interception by Chesney sets up Mount Carmel area in their best field position tonight. And they capitalize and, and, and put seven points on the board. And that, that sometimes is how a game like this is going to be won. Mike Sinkovich, 58, will kick off for the Red Tornadoes. Deep for the Indians, number 18, Phil Farrell. Nate Chicatano's on the right side. And number 10 on the left side, Bill Wetzel. High kick. Good hang time taken by Farrell on the four-yard line. 
Cuts it back to the right side. Paracello with the open field tackle at the 21-yard line. Would help from Ronnie Lentini. And Ronnie Lentini yep. in there. See, that's a, that, that excellent kick. Mike either has worked on that this, this summer or something. He really has it going up, that, doesn't he? Yes, that, that hang time gives your team, even though they're blocked, you're now downfield and you have more guys downfield to protect to the outside. He's hot tonight. Hey, he's un he's untouchable. I'm just I'm just standing back and just in awe of him right now. Griffith sets the Indians on the 22-yard line. Gonna throw. Looks downfield. Ooh, good bro blocked up by 29 Paracella. That time, Paracel in perfect position that time for that, that uh, type of pattern being run. He watched the quarterback, he watched the ball, and broke a pass up. Smoking area not having, other than those first couple of plays in the first series, not a lot of, of uh, success in the passing department right now. 5.39 left in the first half. Griffiths with Nate Rhodes in the backfield. Chicatano goes in motion to the right. Griffiths, big rush, big rush from Dan Dalkus. What a hit by Dalkus, and you have to give him credit tonight. That's three for Dalkus. He's playing a game tonight, they've Warren. Got, they've got to do something, though. They're going to yeah. get him hurt. Yeah, I, I don't know what the play is, but it, it's it's not the play they should be using. It, I mean, it's out, you can't let him come free. Now, if that's designed that way, stop running it. If it isn't designed, right. find out who the heck is supposed to peel back right. and get him peeled back before your quarterback doesn't see the end of the game. Now, you you gotta, can't take blindside hits like well, that. See, it just can't happen. And they actually pull the back that possibly could block him. So they're I, moving the back to the right side. I would be very concerned about running that play again. Very concerned if I was Shemokin area. Third down and about 20. Inside to Farrow. Terry Meyer in on the tackle. Helped out by <laughs> Steve Sinkovich so and number 80, Chris Cuff. Cuff. The defense is, is pretty much strapped their helmet on a little tighter right yeah. now. And Schmokin area is able to do absolutely nothing offensively in their last three offensive series. Well, after the big win last week, it does take a little to get up and get going. It, it's uh, oh, yeah. just well, that I little agree. edge to get her going. I, I, don't, and I don't know if I agree so much with this game, though. It shouldn't be. It this, shouldn't this be. This one kind of right, keeps you, right. <laughs> keeps you tight as a drum from the beginning. Farrow in punt formation. Snaps back. He's rushed this time by Mickey Morose. And that time, he tried to do the same thing. Moreau's put the rush on, and he got off a really lousy kick. So it backfired that time, Wayne. Yeah, you, you, the point of it is you get the ball, you take your time, and you punt it. You don't hold it as long as what Phil's holding it there. That's, that's not right. Well, they, they were, they were, what they were doing was they saw that Mount Carmel area just wasn't going to rush. The first two times they punted, there was no rush whatsoever. They put Mount Carmel area not, did not even attempt pressure on the punter. So yeah, I can see why they switched over and said to him, all right, hold the ball a little bit, get everybody some time down, especially your, your two outside guys, get them downfield, but. Nobody covering Mike Smith here. Ball handed off to Bailey Bailey, and down to about the 30 yard line. That's Bailey with the, and that was, again, there's, there's what we just talked about. That was a inside. bruising Bailey that time. You spread everybody out yeah. a little bit. A Shemokin area player is down. He, he's, he's up, but I think he's gonna have to, 56 from Shemokin. Yeah, they're going to make him, I think, make him go out, right? Chris Christian. Somebody came in, so somebody's going to have to go out. And yeah. now there's a, yeah, he's, they, once they do that, you have to come out. He looks okay. <clears throat> I think he just got stunned a little bit, but he's back up ready to play. That's, that, <laughs> that's one of those, I don't want to come off, I don't want to come off, I don't want to come off. <laughs> they're saying, you have to come off. They've set that play up, though, by, uh, by spreading it out so far with three wide receivers to the right side of the formation, and that, lead the, that left the middle open a little bit. Second down, one yard to go. Bailey the lone back. Sebas fakes to Bailey. Looks at Chastney. Has him break into the corner of the end zone. Incomplete at the goal line. Close, real close that time though. Again, you just gotta like the way Chesney reacts to the ball. Yeah. He really does, he's got that sense for that ball. I'd keep throwing it at him, I really would, because sooner or later he's gonna put it in the end zone. Well, actually, they brought him out of a tight end set on that play, too. So that, yeah, that takes you out a little bit. bit. They hit him a little bit. You hide him in the line a little bit because he's not that big. 
And, and you would never think of him as a tight end, actually, when he lines up. That's not where you <laughs> think of him going. He's not a Chris Cuff. That's what you're saying, right, but, size-wise. Uh, <laughs> it's a good place to let him release from the, from the line of scrimmage because you will confuse people that way. Third down, one yard to go. Veach takes it outside. Not going to get the first down and loses about a yard. Now they'll, they'll go on fourth down here. Well, now they're going to have fourth down and four instead yeah. of fourth down and one. Big fourth down situation for the Red Tornadoes. Ball's in the Shemokin area 33-yard line right now. Little hand signals coming there for you, Warren. Did you see that? <laughs> I saw it. This will be an interesting call here. Fakes to Bailey. Oh. Looks it across the middle. Oh, Fumble on the ball. play and recovered by the Indians. Whoever caught the ball, I'm not sure who the pass was know. thrown to. Nick Chesney makes the tackle. There's a flag on the play now. Paracella caught the ball. Okay, Paracella yeah, caught the ball, fumbled the ball, recovered by number 84, Dennis Kodak. He brought the ball up to about the 25-yard line, and now we have a flag on the play. I think that one's going to be against us. A those. personal foul against the Red Tornadoes. Now, that was a pattern there. There was a, a pattern that we haven't seen yet this year, and, and Paracello was wide open in the middle of the field. Hook pattern, came up two steps to the ball, made the reception, but it was a good hit on the defensive end that, that made him fumble. First down and 10 from the 41-yard line, and the Indians still in this ball game. 241 left in the first half. Can put another one up, can oh, put definitely. one up here. Trip receiver split far left for the Indians. Tries it to Farrow oh. off the right <laughs> side and oh. big hit. Well, the running game is pretty much yeah. over. 71, right Dan Dalkus. Oh, my and goodness. And you are you're correct. Also, there. Malikowski. Against, against this defense, that was a, a slow forming play. There's Griffiths coming back and, and Farrow going on a slant pattern there. And, uh, you know, you just don't do that against this defensive line. Time, official timeout. Changing the. Oh, just getting the right ball, ball in. or something yeah. here. You got three balls on the field, so right. I don't know <laughs> which know. one we want to use here. <laughs> <laughs> well, Red Tornadoes faced with a were faced with a third down and short, lost four yards, and then had to go with the pass play. Second down, nine yards to go for the Indians. Oh, Griffiths, big rush yeah. by 58, Steve Mike Sinkovich. Yeah. Well, was that going to be busted. the option, or, no, or was he just a busted I think play? it was a handoff, and the runner a, wasn't there, right, yeah, Wayne? It looked like a, stra a dive play down the left off guard and tackle, and there was nobody there. Hey, you wonder, could you just picture what goes through Griffith's mind. <laughs> now. You know, like he's standing there with the ball, and he's looking around, where is that, you know? You wonder how that happens, oh. though, when, when you had so much time between plays even right. to, to, to call the play, and, you know, you're sitting there waiting and waiting, and somebody still doesn't go in the right spot when, <laughs> when you snap the ball and you're a coach. You want to oh. go back in the stands and shoot yourself. <laughs> I, pity, I pity Nick back there with the ball. You know, you're standing there with the ball, you know. <laughs> I think it was a quarterback sneak. That's exactly and what it was. That's not a good call when Jeff Dog Evans is right there on your center. Well, Fourth down, 10 yards to go. I was say, it's also not a good call when you have 11 yards to go. <laughs> Timeout call by the Red Tornadoes. Now, Big Red, now this, this, this is going to be a little bit of a chess match on this one. Does Big Red completely rush the punter and see what he's doing this time? Is that what we're going to do? Is that why there's a timeout to give us some time on the clock then? Well, yeah, they had to stop the clock. Away? Well, they had to stop the clock anyway, so they had yeah. to call the timeout to stop the clock. But will they let them punt it away now, or are they going to rush him? What are they going to do? That's, that's going to be an interesting call, and Coach Williams is going to go out and have a talk about it right now. Seven nothing game, but the the game's complexion I think it has has physically changed over a period of the two quarters. Where Shemokin area now is floundering on offense. They they are not putting any offense on the field right now. And again, I think that's a function of of, an, of a fantastic defense. Now, 
you know, we've talked about defenses year in and year out, but again, in my recollection, and I've, I have seen many, many good defenses, this one here might, might be the best. I mean, it's, oh, it's really yeah. something to watch out here. Farrow in the punt, but the big rush doesn't look like it's on, Warren. I don't know what, what it's, they don't look, no, they're not. They're nope, Moroz is the only rush. Bounces nice over point. everybody's head. Veach is going to try to pick it up. He does it the 15, brings it outside, and still on his feet at the five. Now he cuts it back and at the nine-yard line, so no field position for the Red Tornadoes. Now we have a special guest up here with us tonight. <laughs> Mr. Breslin. Mr. V has come up with us here in the, in the press box, and we are truly honored by that one. Fifty-seven seconds left on the clock. Again, an excellent punt there uh, by Phil Farrow to get the ball over Nick Sebus and, and Jonathan Veach's head uh, to get us all the way down to the to the nine-yard line. Had to do a little direction for Mr. Breslin there, Warren. He's going to be on the radio at halftime, folks. Quarterback sneak to Sebus and gains about four yards. And that's just sort of running the clock out, I think, right now. Yeah, I don't think we expected to get that poor field position is what happened. Right. I think we were hoping to get better field position. There's no reason to do something goofy down on your own 11-yard line right now with a 7-0 lead in halftime, 36 seconds away. All in all, Shemokin area has got to be pretty pleased with the way this half has ended, although I, I do think they need to go in at halftime and talk a little bit about offense. Defensively, they're playing a solid football yes, game. They they, are. They're, they're really Very doing good. all the things you need to do. But offensively, they're, they're struggling right now. Bailey off the right side, out to the, about the 23-yard line. First down and 10 red tornadoes. 16 seconds left in the first half. And they were down, in, if you remember back in the first quarter, they were down in striking distance two or three times when they, had, when they got the ball. I don't believe we're going to get another playoff here. There's six seconds left here. We're not in any hurry, so I think it's going to end right here. And somebody called a timeout. It was us with two minutes, 2.9 seconds left on the on the clock. And I'm not oh, sure why we did that one. Won it. <laughs> I'm not sure where we were heading with this one. But you know what? <laughs> if you're if you're a defensive coach, <laughs> you see the white guy yeah. <laughs> call timeout. Yeah, what is he doing? Nine. What is he doing? You gotta get worried <laughs> about like, it. We're ready. <laughs> <laughs> he may have had something sketched on that blank piece of paper and he decides to use it right now. I think he saw him drawn in the grass. On the sideline, you know. <laughs> of course, we have a, our, our usual home game <laughs> attraction coming up for you folks. Jose uh, Gonzalo will be down on the field, and as soon as he compiles the, the uh, statistics, he will give them to us right from the field, as is our home game tradition now. So look forward to that at halftime. And then again, of course, a big second half. But now we're going to look forward to uh, just exactly what the heck it is we're going to do right now. Now you might see everybody going deep. Well, we got Mike Smith in there and Paracel on the other side. Sebas keeps the ball and goes to about the 20-yard line. So that's the end of the half. The score, the Red Tornado 7, the Indians nothing. We'll be back with some halftime stats in one moment. Okay, guys, in the first half for Mount Carmel, 22 rushing attempts for 74 yards. Three of seven passing for 49 yards and five first downs. Individually, Johnny Veach 11 for 30. Nick Sebas 6 for 25. Al Bailey 5 for 19. Receiving Van Doren 1 for 10. Al Bailey 1 for 41. And Johnny Veach 1 for minus 2. For Shimokin, 15 rushing attempts for minus 11 yards. I think indicative of what went on in the first half. Three of eight passing for 24 and three first downs. Not a bad first half at all, guys. No, interesting. And what we said here, Jose, you can throw any records out because it's Shemokin Mount Carmel. You're and, right. And this is, this is what you expect of a Shemokin Mount Carmel game. You're right. But don't you guys just feel it's just going to happen like it's just right there waiting to happen? Yeah. That's like the feeling I'm getting down here. It, yeah. It's just a matter of something just, you know, just taking place now. I agree with you. I mean, I think offensively, Shemokin's hurting, and they really are. But I think defensively, they're tough, but it's only a matter of time the way it looks. Yeah, Somebody's going to break loose here. Very physical, though. Very good test for us. I think this is a great, great football game. Yeah, that's it's right. What, it's what this rivalry is all about and what it has been for 100 years. We agree. Great. I'll see you guys. I want to get ready. Okay. okay. Thanks, pal. Right. 
Jose Gonzalo on the sideline of the Silver Bowl. He was doing his speed statistics. I don't know where he was for most <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't down on the bench. I don't know what happened. No, to him. He, he was in the. I he think had me he nervous there for a the second. Fieldhouse with, with the team. That's where he was at. We look at the captains coming out, and 44 Spears is hurt, uh, Wayne. He's he's uh, he's limping pretty good coming out. So he's playing a heck of a game, though. We've seen him in on quite a few tackles. Has done a real nice job. Well, offensively, I, it's his speed. I'll tell you what that they would they would surely uh, surely miss there. Uh, you know, you take a look at some of those pass patterns down the sidelines, the fly patterns. It, you know, he's out there, and he's open. Uh, you know, it, that would be difficult for them uh, defensively, especially if, if he's not there, because we did name his, call his number out quite a few times in that first half. Tornadoes will receive the start the second half, and uh, I sure as heck hope, and I think, that uh, people will, from this sideline in particular, would like to see the Red Tornadoes with a nice drive there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, seven points. Especially to start exactly that a, second half, seven right? Seven points isn't a comfort level against Smoking Area, that's for sure. And again, you got that feeling that Mount Carmel's offense was just one click away from, from banging it in all the time. I mean, there was so many opportunities that we just didn't uh, capitalize on the way we normally do. So I'm not that worried about it. I think... The, the hitting, and Jose hit on that a little bit, the hitting is, is vicious out there. Smoking area came to play. I mean, it's a real oh. physical football game. And we had probably not seen that so far this year. So that's a little bit new for us to get banged around like they're doing. But I said the key, the key to anything that happens here in the second half, I still believe is, is in the Indians' hands, and it's in their offensive hands. They're, they're not running a lot of plays. They're kind of, and we had talked to, to some people at halftime, it was called vanilla on the offense. They need to do something differently offensively to get the ball moving, or they're going to. It could be a seven nothing game, and they're not going to. They're not going to challenge the end well, zone. I, so. I think the the playbook, I guess, over there sort of uh, looked upon isolating uh, one person out there on the sidelines and hitting him. Jeremy Haddock, the side swipe kicker, sends one down. Going to be taken by Bailey on about the ten yard line. Find some room right up the middle. Breaks it loose. One man the beat. And he gets down to about the, he's still on his feet to the 36-yard line. Great run back by Al Bailey. Good blocking by the interior line of the Red Tornadoes there. Yeah, but and Bailey was truly amazing. What you see we, that burst of speed, that, Wayne, when, when he right. gets it on? What did we say three weeks ago when we were reading the statistics out of the, out of the uh, football book? Bailey's 40-yard uh, dash speed, and it proved it right. It showed it right there. As soon as he got through that hole, you could see that burst of speed for 20 yards. I mean, folks, you just watched the Mount Carmel area fullback return that. I mean, well, often do you see that happen? Bailey goes in motion to the right. To Veach. Big play by 78 Dan from Jones. the Indians. Flags up, face yeah. mask. Jonesy. Jones, and that was a good play. That's as high as I'm going to see a flag fly in my whole <laughs> lifetime. He looks like he was winging it into the into the moon. Have <laughs> bring bring some rain with it, huh? That'll be a face mask penalty uh, on Schmokin area. Again, you know, you take a look there. Defensively, they must have done some stunning, something a little bit different that the offensive line did not see mm -hmm. uh, for for Jonesy to get in there. I mean, that was that was a good play by Jones. I mean, they play tough defense. They really yeah. have. You keep Mount Carmel area offense to seven points, and you're playing some good defense, and they have. First and ten from the 22-yard line. Probably not the place to throw a, a face mask. No. Penalty, you know, I, and I guess that's just being aggressive. You know, yeah. you're out there, and uh, yeah. unfortunately that happens. 4-4 defense right there. Bailey takes it off the right side, cuts it back, and gets down to about the 16-yard line. They have gone to a four-man front right there. There is no nose guard anymore, Wayne. Well, you know, we sort of saw that in the, in the first half that a couple they were times. Leaving I, a, yeah, they were leaving the big a, gap a over big the middle. Gap there, and I I don't understand it. But. And certainly, it's uh, you know, like we say the last week with the four-four against Southern area, it's something that we haven't seen, especially this crew here being on the, uh, playing as long as they have together. Pitch back to Veach, out around the left side, to the 10, down to the 9. Good move by Veach to the 4, down to about the 2-yard line. Oh my Great goodness. run by Jonathan Veach. Now there they jumped out of the 4-4, and they right. came up into a 6-man line, and, and that play was, was the...
perfect play to call against that because we just blocked right down the line and kicked the end out and Veach went in between. Yeah, that, again, uh, Shemokin area is moving around on defense, and that's the first thing we've seen do that. Right. Uh, the three teams before us kind of got stuck in one defense, and they didn't budge the whole game. Shemokin area is kind of, they're, they're throwing every scheme they've got out of trying to counter what we're going to do offensively. Power right. eye formation for the Red Tornadoes. Sebas to Veach. Oh, big play by 56. 56. Chris Christian. Yeah, Christian made it. I don't know how he did it, but that was a great play by Christian, stopping uh, Veach in the backfield that time. Malcolm Larry has lost yardage there. Ball's back just inside the five-yard line now of Shemokin area and brings up a second down and just, just under five yards for a touchdown. But nice play that time by Shemokin area. Christian lining up at the at like a cornerback spot right now, coming outside linebacker. Quarterback sneak to about the one yard line. They do that again, it's a touchdown, guys, right? Well, that's, uh, yeah, I, th I think that's predicated on, on where Shemokin area is lining up the nose guard and what they're doing there. I think Mount Carmel area is reading that as they get to it. Now you're third and one. I'll tell you what, this has probably been the toughest Touchdowns inside the five-yard line. Oh, We've yeah. seen all here. Shemokin area just doesn't want to budge. They're going to try the power eye formation here for the Red Tornadoes. Again, it, it looks like it's open there. Going to go to Veach behind a power touchdown. Red Tornadoes in that time. He stayed right in the middle, and it was yeah. there. But Good it, run. I mean, it was a, just a giant hole open right. up that time. They really pounded Shemokin off the ball, and, and he had just waltzed into the end zone. Fifty-eight. Mike Sinkovich in to attempt the extra point for the Red Tornadoes. Seventy-five. John Ells with the long snap, and twenty-nine. Josh Paracella will be the holder. Snaps back. It's down. The kicks up. Nice. And it's good. With 9.06 left in the third quarter, the score, the Red Tornadoes 14, the Indians nothing. Nice drive that time by the Red Tornadoes. Helped out by a penalty, though, a well, face mask penalty. You got you to give Bailey credit there. It was set up by the return. The return Bailey, on the kickoff. A, a nice return there all the way down to the 35-yard line. Now, the, probably the most pressure of the game goes on the, on the offense in Shemokin area. They yeah, have definitely. to do something on this series if they're going to stay in the football game. Otherwise, it's just going to be a slow death there as the game winds down because first half, other than the first two series where they moved the ball a little bit with some short passing and, and a little bit of mixing it up, they have done absolutely nothing. I mean, I mean absolutely nothing offensively since that point in the game. They fall behind 14-0, and now they, they need to, to move the ball a little bit. If nothing else, to try to gain some field position as the half wears on. Well, it seemed like they got sort of gotten away from that first quarter, uh, the playbook there. Uh, short passes, two, mm. three steps back, something real quick. They, they tried going a little bit longer, and, and the defense uh, for the Tornado sort of took over because of the time frame involved there. 58, Mike Zinkovich will kick off for the Red Tornadoes. Farrow, Shikitano, and Wetzel deep for the Indians. Nice high kick again from Sinkovich, taken by Farrow on the five yard line. Finds a hole. Now Farrow's off to the races, down the sidelines, and knocked out of bounds by Beach. 25, Jonathan Veach. Veach was the safety valve. He had uh, yeah. Farrell stuck up against the sideline, and all he was trying to do was just shove him, and he did. But and great think, run back by Farrell. Yeah, I think Terry Myers was there, too, getting yeah. him out of bounds. Excellent. Nice return. I think Veach was a safety valve yeah. there, yeah, too. He, I think yeah. he, he was stayed standing, back, he right? Standing, he was standing back there. I said he, he got himself right up against the sideline, and Farrell had nowhere. He was either going to go over him or he was going out of bounds, and you know he's not going over him. 8.57 left in the third quarter. Wetzel split far right. Griffiths, hands off to Farrow, gain of about five yards. Terry Meyer, number one, in with the tackle for the Red Tornadoes. It's 
Second down, four yards to go. Nate Rhodes, the lone back for the Indians. Fakes the Rhodes, now he's gonna try that pattern again. Hit Spears across the middle. First down at about the 28 yard line, good play. Excellent Faked, play. faked to Shikitano going down the sidelines and caught Spearsy on a little slant. Spear, actually Spears made the play though, he reached, he reached around them and, and had to go to the back side to make the catch, he did it with one hand, so that was a, really a nice play by Spears that time. That's like I said, you know, Spurs, he's an athlete out there. He's going to give you 100%. And, you know, being hurt and still making one end of grab like Spears that. coming out of the tight end, end position, lined up there again. First down and 10 Indians from the 28. Flags on the play, and one of the Indians moved. The legal procedure against the Indians. Well, that's a killer, though. Brings up a first yeah. and 15 now for the Indians. That's not what they wanted to do. Move the ball back, and, and the ball will be set down at Mount Carmel area's 37-yard line now. Wetzel split far right. Chicatano again split left. Rhodes in the backfield, the lone back. Looking at Chicatano going down the sideline. Good play by Paracel to break that one up at about the 10-yard line. Excellent play that time by Paracel. Yep. That's the way to do it. I mean, he stayed with them right down. He saw the ball. When the ball got close, he went for it. Perfect play. And again, they, they're just intent on, on that play. I don't know what oh, it is I'm they've tight. seen in, in films or whatever, but they are just going to keep running that play all night. You go back to two years, three years ago, I guess it was, uh, down at Chimokin with Paulie Yost. They oh, ran yeah. trips. <laughs> they isolate it until they broke it. Griffiths. Tries Farrow up the middle. Jeff Evans in there, Malakoski in there, 58 Mike Sinkovich in there, and one Terry Meyer. Good gang tackling by the interior of the Red Tornado defense. That's third and 15 now, and, and uh, again, that penalty hurt. It really did. Yes. It changed the ends. And I believe they're probably going to go on fourth down here either way. Griffiths, quick pass to the right side, intercepted by Steve Sinkovich at the 31-yard line, but knocked down by An interior, I don't know Cuffey if it was Malakoski. Or somebody, Cuff, somebody in the middle there knocked it down. Somebody got the hand up on it. Nice play that time. And, and you know, they, they knew exactly what he was doing because everybody's hands went up. They saw what he turned and he was going to throw that slant pattern real quick, and everybody's hands got up, and that was the end of the play and a big interception. And again, Shemokin area that time, uh, uh, put together a pretty nice looking offensive drive, got hurt a little bit with the penalty, forced them into a passing situation and boom, another interception. That's two turnovers on the Indians tonight and both of them hurt them. Split backs for the Red Tornadoes. <laughs> I didn't know what we Pitch were doing back there. to Veach and gain of about six yards. I, uh, what happened? Like we, like we snapped know, you know, almost well, at a different yeah, time. You know than what happened else. was we had two ends not knowing who was online was and offline, going back and, forth. and they were trying to switch. And Sebus was trying to wait for that. Yeah, <laughs> it looked like a really slow thing to happen <laughs> there when they when they snapped the ball finally. Try that again. Six <laughs> yard gain. <laughs> yeah. yeah, two guys, two guys out here to the to the near side, tippy toeing back. Yeah, and keep forth dancing, side. guys. We'll which, try it again. <laughs> which guy's on the line of scrimmage and which guy isn't? Good call. <laughs> <laughs> Sebus to Bailey. First down at about the 47-yard line. You know, nice Bailey, little quick hole there. Bailey's running tough. He really is. Bailey's, Bailey's coming out to hit you in, in this game. He, he's really having a nice game inside like that. And again, he's a kid that's just going to keep pounding at you and pounding at you, and you're going to let up one time. Oh, yeah. And you let up, and you're chasing him down the well, field. Well, him, you can't. You cannot let up on, yeah, on him. He's too strong as he's too strong as a runner for, for a fullback to run you over. Mm -hmm. And if you give him that, that little edge, he's gone on you because of his speed. Sebas keeps the ball going out around the outside. Ooh, that time, 88. Great got move by number 88, which is Nate. What do we got there? 88, Nate Kaleda. 
Coletta. Coletta. Hey, Coletta. Hey, that hey. was a nice play by Coletta. Yeah. Coletta made a great I'll play. I'll tell you what. It took us a while to get his name, but <laughs> <laughs> we got to get him on. You have to stop that guy, as you say, Warren. Yeah. You got to stop that guy on the line, though, so that Sebas doesn't have to make that big roll. The big arc. It's, right. Once you get the arc spread like he did, it makes it easier to run him down. And that's exactly what he did. That was just that was all Coletta that time. He just made a nice play. Well, I'll tell you, I, I think Shimokin has seen that enough on films that it works. Yeah. And I think right, their yeah. ends now are staying home where they belong. Smith and Paracella split far left for the Red Tornadoes. Third down and 20. Oh. Sebas rolls. Big rush and a good tackle. Made by 75 of the Indians, Chris Yoder. You're looking at somebody open, aren't you, oh, Wayne? Oh, Mikey Smith was wide <laughs> open, standing there in about the 50-yard line. Nice play by Yoder again, though. That was that's he, exactly what they they're you're well you're right they're well scouting us yes. and, and see that roll like that and they're putting penetration on and that's what's th throwing the play off and Mount Carmel area ends up punting the ball now. So the, interce the interception it. doesn't really pay off right now for Big Red. Myers snap back to Sinkovich, kicks away. Wetzel takes it on the 35-yard line. Mickey. Moreau's misses him, and now he takes it outside flag. and a flag, flag on the play. It'll come back. 84 really took on Paracella. Clipped 84 uh, Kodak clipped Paracella right in front of the Red Tornado bench. I, th I think, I think Paracella has a cramp, I think is what he's doing there, though. But oh. he's the guy also where the, he, the flag is laying right next to his helmet. No, it was a major clip right there. Yeah, but is that yeah. what, I mean, is he, he's cramped? Well, now he's cramped, I yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, they're going to call the clip right at that point because that's where the flag is, and it's going to come back. But I don't, I mean, the clip, I don't think the clip hurt him. I think he right. has a cramp right now is what really happened to him. So they're doing the, the usual cramp routine, which is grab your toes and yank or push, <laughs> depending you, on which way it goes, scream. as you scream in your helmet. So Another, that time, uh, Schmokin area would have had great field position on a nice run back by Wetzel, but. Oh, oh another oh, flag. flag now. Somebody's talking in the yeah. huddle, and we've seen it this year, too. It's, yeah, it's called. Us, it's yeah. been called against us. It, it is called. You, and yeah. I'll be truth with you, it's the one rule I like. Yep, keep it's your a good mouth rule. shut right. and play yep. the game. And that goes for both sides. That's discipline. That, that's well, we've right. had it. That's we know. Yeah, we've yeah, learned. We, yeah. The Red Tornadoes had a couple calls, so. Uh, and we had quite a few. Really, really now, Schmokin area wisely calls a timeout. Uh, their coach, Chicatano, I guess. Is that Chicatano there? Yep. Yeah, he's, he's already talking, talking about what's referee. going on. But wisely calls a timeout, gets, gets in there and says to his guys, you know, let's uh, focus back on football. But those penalties just yeah. killed him. I mean, this drive is now starting back. And they had good field position. Like now, the the ball's know. on a 28-yard line right now yeah. of Shemokin area. So, Our list for uh, who's working with us here I tonight. got him. We got him. Oh, here. we got him already. No, no, we'll do him. We'll okay. Do him. Here we go. And the timeout. Folks, and, and these people, again, as I say to you every week, the only reason you're watching this, the only reason you hear us is because of these people here. Master Control, of course, is Joe D'Amico. Camera, big bad Joe Mays is standing next to us. Down on, on the field, I guess we have John Baluda, Ryan Devine, and of course we have our German exchange student here okay. for photography, uh, Matthias Quimbach, and of course the big man George is down on the truck orchestrating this entire affair. But I'll say it a, a bazillion times, it won't matter. These kids are truly what makes this thing happen. The level of expertise and, and technical know how that goes in to a, a first class production like this is unmatched. And believe me, we have nothing to do with it. And don't I mean, forget. The only, the only thing we try not to do is get electrocuted by the headsets by doing something <laughs> dumb. I mean, that's, that's our biggest job up here. So don't can't forget. Say enough. In the morning announcements, right, 7 30. We talked about that from Southern at the last game at 7 30. You can tune in to Channel 13. And of course, Mount Carmel area broadcast its morning announcements. So you want to catch up on, on whatever's happening in school that day and the sporting event for the week and all. That's the time to do it. So we invite everybody to tune in and, and catch some more of this. And you see a lot more of the, of, of the kids during that broadcast. A lot of different kids talking and all. So it really turns out to be a nice thing. First down and 10 from the 30, 23-yard line. Pitch back to Farrell, trying to take it outside. Steve Sinkovich grabs oh. him by the back of the shoulder pads and brings him down at the 27-yard line. Oh, that's, that's pure football there from a linebacker. You see that? 
Yep. I mean, he saw what was happening. He shoots the gap, gets around, and reaches his hand out. Once he gets his big claw on you, boom, it's over. Three thirty-five left in the third quarter. Fourteen to nothing. Red Tornadoes in the lead. Farrow, the lone back. It's that play again. Going to the sidelines. Hits Chicatano. First down at the 43-yard line. That time it was it was a poor pass. He got yeah. hit, and that's what allowed Chicatano to catch the ball. It became a wounded duck as it was <laughs> fluttering down to him, and he backed up and got it. And he had nothing against Griffith that time. He just got got hit as he was as he was releasing it. Well, that's that's going to sum up their offense, I think, tonight so far. They're just intent on running that play, and that's what we're going to keep seeing. First down and 10 from the 44, 43. Tries Rhodes up the middle. Gain of about two yards. Nope, still on his feet. First down. I don't know how he got up. First down. I at about either. the 48-yard line. I don't think he ever went down. There was enough red shirts there that he just laid on top yeah. of them. Yeah, good second effort by Rhodes that time. That's what you want. Keep yeah, the legs Terry, turning. Terry, Terry Meyer took a pretty good shot yeah, on that did. one. Yeah, Meyer's going to come he, out of the game. I'll tell you what. Terry met him right on the line. He, he filled the gap, and he made him right on the line. Good Bailey, play. Bailey goes in at linebacker for Meyer as he comes out, and he's going to take a breather. First down and 10 in Red Tornado territory at the 46-yard line. Tried Farrow. Big rush from the Red Tornadoes. Bailey in there. Steve Sinkovich in there. Also 54, Jeff Evans. Oh, that time Farrow ran into three members of his own line. We were, right. were already pushed back into the backfield. Not much of a line surge that time by the Indians, and that, that play was dead from the start. Second down, 14 yards to go. Two minutes left in the third quarter. And it seems like every every series this this happens to them. They get back into a, a long yarded situation on second and third down, and, and it kind of changes what they're trying to do. They're doing some work on Chris Cuff on the bench too. He has not been in for this series. Forty one. Mickey Morose is in a defensive end. We have the guided missile in a defensive end right now. Griffiths, back to pass. Rush from Dalkus. Looks over the middle, and. Chesney tripped, but yeah. they're going to call interference. He was actually pushed by the Shimokan player. I think this that's, could be against Shimokan. That's who it is against. I yeah, they're calling it against Shimokan area. Yeah, I saw Chesney go down, right. and, and he, he was in position for the ball. Right. Yes, it is. Yeah, I wondered how he was going to get called for that if that's what were to happen. He gave him a shove in the back. Yeah. Yeah. You watch it, yeah. and you can see it. He gave him a shove in the back. I mean, almost, you know, you don't see it very often, defensive interference like that. And I wondered when he threw the flag where he was going with it. Because, I mean, Chesney's the guy on the ground when it ended up. So a nice call by the, by the ref that time. If you're from Mount Cornwall, if you're from <laughs> you're going to question that thing. <laughs> and I think they are I all think they may be questioning that, that is. But I think there's a loss of down on that too, right? Third down? Mm -hmm. Yes, there is. Uh, not so far there isn't. Yes, it is. Oh, yeah, yeah. it was second. Now it's third, right? No, it's come, well, the scoreboard's still showing okay. second, but it's third on the sideline. Third down, 28 yards to go for the Indian. Like the scoreboard refuses to make it third down. Going to try that pass to Chicatano. This time, too, Chesney was over there, and he threw it out of bounds. See, that time, you now there you saw a case of where he couldn't see the receiver at all. He was just trying to pick a spot because he dropped back two steps, and he threw the ball. It wasn't yeah. aimed at anybody. He was hoping Chicatano was going to be close to it. And that's not going to happen very often, you know what I mean? And again, the rush is so hard, and the hands are up. He's just having trouble seeing well, where I'll, to throw at. I'll tell you what, I, you know, you look at this defensive line, and look at how, not only the size, uh, but you look how tall this defensive line is. Mm -hmm. It has to be very difficult for a quarterback to look over the line, especially anything over the middle. Oh, bad snap back, but no rush on. Farrell gets the kick away. Oh, bounces in between. Veach and Sebus, and they're having a rough time deciding who's taking yeah. the ball tonight. See, I, I think we need to put some pressure on Farrow as he's kicking. Right, because the rush gets it. down there too sure. quick, right? Right, and, and what you have there, two guys looking at the defense coming down, 
and you're saying, are you going to get the ball or am I going to get the ball? Where I think if we put a little pressure on him and let Phil kick it sooner, I think you're, you're not going to have that problem. Near the end of the third quarter, ball sitting on the Mount Carmel area, 18-yard line. Split backs for the Red Tornadoes. Tries Bailey. Up to about the 21-yard line. In on the tackle, 56, Chris Christian. And also 76, Carnuccio. Quarterback snake, Sebus for a gain of only about three yards. There, they, there they, uh, they caved in real good, didn't they? Third down, five yards to go. You know, the defensive scheme might be to pinch to the inside. You know, you, you just don't know what they're going to do, but they are leaving that gap there. Smith into the, into the game, but he was, I guess Coach Cho <laughs> making up his mind on what he's putting in there. So they're going to have to snap this one a little quicker. You get, you're winding down the last play of the third quarter now. But I think they need to move quicker, to tell you the truth, or they're just hoping the quarter ends. Oh, Carnuccio with a big rush. Sebas tried to put a move on him. Down on the 11 and, and finished off by number 72, Brian Drust. Well, they're a lot quicker than we had yeah. seen so far. Yeah. Now, now you're starting to tell that. He would have gotten away in the last three games, but, but not that time. I think now the only thing you do now is make the decision quicker. You know, if you're right. going to run or whatever you're doing, do it quicker or they're going to nip. That was a big loss, and we're going to end up punting out of our end zone. Yeah. The end of the third quarter, the score, the Red Tornadoes 14, the Indians nothing. Again, we take a moment to remind you, ladies and gentlemen, this is WKMC-TV broadcasting to you directly from the Mount Carmel Area High School campus on a microwave signal of WLX267. We are an instructional fixed television service, and you catch us every Wednesday night, 8 o'clock, channel 13, on the service electric cable system. KMC has had quite a few calls concerning the replays of Shemokin Area football, usually seen on our channel every Thursday evening. These tapes have been supplied by Shemokin Area to WKMC-TV in past years. WKMC-TV has been informed that this year, Shemokin Area High School will be unable to supply us with the video of their games for replay. This means we are unable to provide a Thursday evening telecast of the football game. And again, I said, hopefully that will change for you guys next year. Punts away. It goes out of bounds. I'm trying to see where they mark it right now. 44 yard line? 44. Good field position for the Indians. And and now you're 11-53 you're in the fourth quarter, guys. I'd say it's, it's must time for the Shemogan right. offense if you're going to win the football game. And, and you know, they, they've moved the ball so well in the, in the first series, the first four downs of any series that they're running here. They move the ball down, get over the 50-yard line, and then they just stall right there. Mm -hmm. Trip split to the far left for the Indians. Going to try a screen out here to Shikitano. Gets a good block. Gets another good block and is down the sidelines. Run out of bounds by number five, Sebus. But that was a great call because yep. they had trips out here and the coverage just wasn't there against right. for the Red Tornado nice defense. Nice play. Nice play that time. Nicely designed. Great execution. And they caught Mount Cormel area kind of flat-footed on defense that time. And now probably either their deepest or, or closer or deepest penetration of the evening now. Ball sitting on the Mount Cormel area 20-yard line. First down, Indians. Now, this is usually the spot that the Indians have shot themselves in, yeah. in the past in this game, so we we'll need to see what they decide to do in offense here for this series. Griffin's going to keep it on the option, and he's tackled by 80, Chris Cuff, helped out by 47, Steve Sinkovich. That was, I, th I think that was an unusual call, uh, at least going to the cuff side of the ball. I don't know. Well, they called it an option, but it really wasn't because there was no, no yeah, back was no running pitch. with him. I think he yeah, was, he no was pitch man. too close to him, to yeah. tell you the truth. He wasn't yeah. back far enough. That just looked like an odd play. He was right up against the line. You're not going to be able to – I mean, you have to have a couple seconds of decision which way you want to turn it in even, and he couldn't see anything to turn in. 
Again, now a loss of two yards. And again, this is they begin that little slow right. backup that they've done before. Chicatano split left for the Indians. Out of the shotgun. Griffiths looks to the right side. Intercepted. 26, Ronnie Lentini. Out to the 21-yard line. Great job by Lentini. I mean, that, he threw it right, in, right into right. coverage. You couldn't have thrown it into more people if you tried. And Lentini, I mean, he, was, he threw it right to Lentini, actually. Nice, nice pickup by Lentini, but again, the Shemokin Indians are thwarted on their best drive of the evening. Mount Carmel area takes over, but I, I think probably the first ill-advised pass of the evening yeah. for the Indians. I don't think he should have, and, and actually he, one of the few times he went into, into the shotgun went, to begin with. Uh, and not right. only that, he went, in, he went into the, the uh, flooded side. Usually yeah. he comes over here to the weaker side looking for the single man. Out of the split back formation. Gives it to Veach off the right side, cuts it back. Fumble on the play, it. recovered by the Indians. He'll carry it into the end zone. Down to the one yard line. Big play by the Indians, and I, I didn't, Yep. that 50, who picked it up? 88. 88? Number That's, 88, Nate Coletta. Coletta. Again. Coletta's having a big game defensively for the Indians. Big mistake for Mount Carmel area, and now the Indians on the one yard line of Mount Carmel area. And now this will be the biggest defensive stand of the evening for the Big Red. Again, costly mistake and a turnover. And that's what gets you every time. Uh, this is, a, you know, this is a team here. And, then, and the game. This is a team that you can't count out at any time. No. Timeout you know. called by the Indians. Right. That's a good call. That well, they were call. a little confused There's still there. 10 minutes and 44 seconds left on the clock in this ball game. Lots of time for lots of things to happen here. And if you look at the second half, they've been over the 50-yard line in, in tornado territory just about the whole, the whole second half as they've had the ball. So they are moving the ball, and, and here's a case here. Defensively, they come up with it. Now, it's going to be hard to keep them out of the end zone. My guess is the big man, Rhodes, is going to see the oh, ball. Yeah. If it's me, that's who's going to get the ball. He's, he's a load at the line of scrimmage, and I, you only need, I mean, really, you need less than a yard. He's inside the one-yard line right now, so. And we've seen the last two, time, the two times that he did carry the ball. You know, he's picking up two, three yards, and I'll tell you what, you, you have to hit him and hit him hard to bring him down. Mm -hmm. So gut check time for Mount Carmel area, big red defense. 10.44 remaining in the fourth quarter. Tight formation. Going to try a quarterback sneak with Griffiths. And I don't think he's going to make it there. No, he didn't get in, believe it or not. He they gained stood about him up. like three inches. Yeah, they stood him right up, though. He was, he was up too far. Touchdown. That was the longest wow. call on yep. the touchdown we've seen. Ooh, that one, that one took a while there, folks. <laughs> Maybe they talked it over. 10-27 remaining in the fourth quarter. Shemokin puts the score up on the scoreboard. 10-27 remaining in the fourth quarter. Shemokin puts the score up on the scoreboard. Six points they're about to attempt, and they're going to kick the extra point. Fourteen, uh, Jeremy, Jeremy Haddock. He's a uh, soccer-style kicker, and he does real well. So that's probably why they're going for this seven. It's up and almost blocked, but it's good. With 10:27 left in the game, the score: Red Tornadoes 14, Indians seven. Man, turnovers playing a, a yeah. big part of this football game. Yeah, defensively, uh, we're even up now. We, yep. uh, you know, scored defensively by the Tornadoes and now won by the Indians. Player hurt on the field. It's one of the Indians down. Good, hard, tough football. No, he brought the, he picked no, it up. I don't know who made the hit. Having conversations inside the box between us all here now and, and extra people. Well, we had to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people are wondering what we're talking about. <laughs> I can't, I did not get the number of the, of the, the down Shemokin player right now. 
We're going to have to wait till they get him up a little bit. He's laying straight on his back, and he's he's he can't see anything there. And they're working down on his looks like his ankle weight, yeah. from what I can tell. Now I don't know. I'll, I'll tell you the truth. I don't know who it is. It, it might be Carnuccio. Uh, well, it's a big fella. What, <laughs> whoever it is, it's a big one. Well, Yoder's over on the sideline, so it's not yeah. Chris Yoder. And I think I see Carnuccio over there, is too. It? See 76 right by Coach uh, there, right there turning around, Wayne. He's there, so. 68. 68. Oh, that's Tasker. That's yeah, why that's you the, said it was a big fella. It's a big one. I can tell by the way he was laying there. It's a big one. Looks like an ankle, maybe. And I'm, I'm just concerned when you're that big, you get something, you hurt your leg, they got to shoot you, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't the, the, the horse think I'm in the, in the play there? Oh, boy, and that I'm could just, be a phone call Just there. kidding. I'm just kidding. Rich knows that. He's a good nah, kid, he's, great he's, kid. Oh, he's, a he's playing well in the football so, game, and I'm he, just he knows, he knows we're kidding. He, I wish him the best. I really do. And he's going to be a big loss here. You know, the game tightens up 14-7. to 7. You want to have that kid with you, so hopefully he can come back in the game. But he's, he's kind of going off real tenderly right now, so. I don't know if we'll see him remaining or not, but. Haddock will kick off for the Indians. He's one of those three and four guys to bring him off the field, too, you know. <laughs> if you take a look over there. Ten twenty-seven left on the clock. Lots of time in this ball game. You had 14 oh, to definitely. seven red tornadoes in the lead. We got Tasker off the field now, so they'll Get the clock ready to go. Again taken by Bailey on the 15-yard line. Tries it up the middle. Almost Ooh. broke through to the 38. Nice run back. I just saw Jay Malakoski hit three kids. <laughs> <laughs> That's hard to do. Christian was in on the stop for the Indians. Well, big red right now. Now is their first chance of the season to respond to some adversity. Right. They're up seven points only. It's a tight football game, fourth quarter. This is where it counts, folks. Pitch back to Veach. Cuts it back into the field and gains about three yards. Good tackling on that outside. 78. Uh, Jonesy in on the tackle that time. You know, you go back to Jose's statement that this is an intense game. There's some mm -hmm. hard hitting down there on that field. And then... Now you can see the number of the number of drop passes, the number of fumbles that we've had already tonight. They've done a nice job containing uh, John tonight. Yes. They really have. They haven't let him get loose at all tonight, and that's pretty much the key to, to trying to win a football game because he starts running around on you, it's over. Sebus on the option keeps the ball, cuts it back to the middle of the field, first, first down time. at the 49-yard line. First time we've seen the option tonight, and it yep. goes for a nine-yard gain. I tell you what, that play could have went either way. I think he could have pitched that one and picked up the first down. Well, they always say when the quarterback has a chance to go to that oh, hole, definitely. take it, right, Wayne? Yeah, you're right. You never want the, the, the thing is put the ball in the air. You don't right. Want to put that ball in the air if you don't have to. Trips right for the Red Tornadoes. Doesn't look like it's covered. Gets the pass to Van Doren. Gains about nine yards to yeah. the 41-yard line, and it was not covered. That, well, that was the same play we saw Shemokin run. Shemokin run, right. right. Exact, exact same uh, formation, exact same throw, and then you're, you're asking you two wide receivers that are out there that don't catch the ball to instantly become blockers and set up what, what would be like a quasi-screen uh, is what it really comes down to. Quasi-screen. Quasi quasi screen. Quasi. Quasi screen. Second down, three yards to go. I made that one up in case you guys were wondering. <laughs> I wasn't. New, I, I figured that one out right away. It's a new away. football term. Oh. You'll hear it probably oh. by you. In fact, I'm expecting to hear that on, on the NCAA football telecast. Pitch back to Veach. Find some running room. First down at about the 37-yard line. It's tough running room, but he got a first down. In on the tackle, number 90 for Shimokin which is Nate Rhodes. I'll tell you what, Dennis Kodak had, had dibs on, on Veach in the backfield, and he's probably thinking, how did he squeeze through? Well, Veach is, Veach is running now like he's extremely angry over, over the fumble, too. If you take a look at him, he's got a real determined pace about him right now. And that, you know, that's a real sign of a player, though. You know, some players will fumble the ball like that and boom, it kind of wrecks them for the game. Other players will come in and say, give me the ball. You know, let me make up for this thing. 
trips left this time for the Red Tornadoes. Tries it up the middle to Bailey. Nate Rhodes hangs on to him and he drags him to the 30 yard line. Yeah, that time the trips formation, Shemokin and Area did not adjust no. to it. They did not cover the entire trips formation. Now, either they knew the ball was being handled off inside, and I'm not sure how they would know that, or they just made a mistake defensively. And I think Mount Carmel Area is going to want to look at that again because one of those guys would have been free oh, in, into the secondary because yeah. there was no one there. Ooh. I think they just got a little confused, and I think they dodged the bullet that time because, you know, I don't know how they could have known it was an inside run. Going to try to the short side of the field. Bailey, oh, first nice. down at the 24-yard line. Al Bailey running hard from his fullback spot tonight. He's had, a, he's had one of those quiet games, right, but really a tough game. I oh, mean, definitely. my goodness, he, is, he has really been in there whacking hard at everybody. And that's what we said about it. You know, his running style uh, is really two-handed as a fullback. He has that ability just like there. You need that three, four yards to pick up that first down. He'll run you over. But again, like the kickoff, you give him that space, he's going to break it. Sebus tries to Bailey. Tackled on the bottom, 76, Carnuccio. Or 78, Dan Jones. Jones. One, one thing I think we, we do notice here offensively in Mount Carmel area, we have stopped throwing the ball. Right. We're not throwing the ball at all here in the second half. Well, I'll tell you what, between uh, Dan Jones and Carnuccio and, and uh, Chris Yoder here, they're, they're definitely keeping, them, keeping us in, the, keeping uh, Schmokin in the ball game, you know. Veach the lone back for the Red Tornadoes. On the option, pitches to Veach, read beautifully by 88. Nate Coletta never, ever no. changed from the, he played it like he should. You go yeah. after the back. Yeah, Coletta knew the play, he really did. He's having a whale of a football game. Yes, he, he is. He's really come on here. He's, he's all over the place defensively for the Indians right now. Carmel area has got to be a little concerned here. There's still 545 That's right. in the football game, and they're at a third and 18. They kind of self-destructed when they got inside Indian territory on this drive. Paracella goes in motion. Everybody to the left. Looking out to the left. Intercepted! Wessel Wetzel. intercepted it on the 10. Knocked out of bounds by Sebus, but a great interception by Wetzel brings it back out to the 46-yard line. The Indians first down and 10 with 5.24 left on the clock. Boy, he read, Wetzel read that perfectly. He, he stayed back, stayed back. The receiver was already covered, and he just cut in front and took the ball. Well, we did flood the left side. Th th that's where the pass was going for sure. And folks, if you're watching the game here, we do apologize, but there's not a lot we can do with that. A fog is now almost instantly begun to settle down onto the Silver Bowl, and that's why your screen looks the way it does. It's, it's, it's getting thicker as the game progresses. Thankfully, we only have a short time to go here. Trips left for the Indians. Tries Farrow up the middle. Jeff Evans in on the tackle. Malakoski there also, 58. Steve's, or 47, Steve Sinkovic, and 58, Mike Sinkovic. Now, Schmuckin area has to view this as one of the last times they're going to touch the ball. Right. So, I mean, this is this is a make it count and they, offensive you know, series. They, they probably looked again at that last play. Now, look, they're putting trips again to the left, and they, they, again, they have one guy over here that the short guy not covered, but now they're bringing uh, Sebus over. Going to try that screen pass again to Chicatano. Paracella read it, but he was clipped on the play, and that'll be a, yeah, a good call. Good call by the absolutely, officials. Absolutely, Cat, because Paris, otherwise the, cat, the, the, the play is made. Oh, definitely. Paracella had, had position on, uh, who is that, uh, Dennis Kodak on that, on that play, yeah. and, and he did. It was in the back. Yeah, there's really not a lot of argument there. You watch, if you watch it on TV, and we'll, we'll probably show that a second time, clearly he has him in the back as he comes up to make the tackle. And again, an unfortunate penalty for the Indians, though. They had great field position, and with four minutes and 12 seconds now and a seven-point lead, time is truly becoming their enemy. 
they need to make something happen on this series. If they end up punting, I believe they may not see the ball again, and that, that'll be the end of the game. 440, 430 left on the clock in the ball game. Griffiths out of the shotgun formation. Looking at a screen pass, read beautifully by 47, Steve Sinkovich. Yeah, and you had Malikuski out there too, and that play was going nowhere. That time we saw what was happening, another big loss for the Indians, and they have marched consistently backward now in two downs, bringing up third down, and oh my goodness, it's going to be... How the heck long is it going to be? It's <laughs> 37, 34? 30, 37, 34 there, yards know. or 35 yards for the first down. So I don't know if you oh, – is that the big guy? He's back. Yeah. Tasker's back. Yeah, he is. He's yeah, back in there for the Indians. There, the big man. He probably heard that shoot thing, and he He's said, no <laughs> way, I'm going back in. Third down, 34 <laughs> yards to go. <laughs> Griffiths out of the shotgun. Oh, bad Ooh. snap. Big rush from Malakoski. Puts him down at the 11-yard line. Fourth down at about 44 yards to go. Well, I believe any, any chance to look in there you had just got thrown to the ground by Malakoski. Although, an absolutely fabulous defensive game by the Smoking Area Indians. Oh, definitely, yeah. I mean, I, I can't say enough about how well they played. Mount Carmel Area's defense, just as stifling as ever. I mean, they are truly something to watch. Shemokin area and punt formation at their goal line. Nice punt. This one at Sebas bounces in front of him, takes it on about the 49 yard line. Gets a good block, another good block, Ooh. breaks it down the sideline. Out of bounds. And down Out of to bounds. about the 32 yard line. Nice run back, no flags on the play. Now you see what the little bit of pressure on the punter does. Yeah. It gets yeah. that ball down the field a lot right. quicker. Yeah, I, I think we, we probably should have put pressure on him, as you said, from the beginning, yeah. because I, I'm not sure why. We, we usually, usually you have one guy that does that anyway. You know, you, there's always one guy that keeps pressure just so he doesn't do that, but we didn't seem to be doing anything at all that way on pressure wise, so. Now Carmel area takes over the ball. It's inside the Shemokin area 30-yard line at the 28. Uh, two minutes, 45 seconds remain in the football game. Time is now everything for the Indians if they're going to win this game. High formation. Seba's going to pass. Paracela at the four-yard line. Oh, my First goodness. down, Red Tornado. He caught, he caught a perfect throw, a perfect pass right over the top of Matt Thomas. Balls on the four-yard line, ladies and gentlemen. And that is, again, just takes the wind out of the sails for the Indians, but you Boy, can't say enough about them. They stayed tough in this game. Yes, they did. <clears throat> All the way down to, you know, maybe one or two plays. You're right. That, this, is a, this is a great defensive game. A normal, though, a good Mount Carmel Chimogan oh, football game. Yeah, that's what it's all about. What it's, you expect. This is what in, it's supposed to be. In the beginning right. of the game, when you say you throw out all the, 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 that's the right. stats and everything, and people look at you like you're nuts. Well, I'll tell you what. This is truly why you throw them out, because this is it. Power eye football to Veach. Behind the power, touchdown, Red Tornadoes. With 2-10, they put their third touchdown in, and that one's going to... Ended for the Red Tornadoes. Yeah, that's that's the end of the game right now. Uh, Smoking area will have one more shot with 2:10 remaining, but the game, for all intents and purposes, has ended. Mount Carmel area will win their third straight, fourth straight game, and uh, going to come out of here feeling uh, pretty good about this one because <laughs> it wasn't decided no. until the last two minutes. Number 58, Steve Sinkovich, in to attempt the extra point. Snaps back to Paracella from else. The kicks up. And it's good. With 2.10 left in the game, the score, the Red Tornadoes 21, the Indians 7. So the, uh, the coal bucket will safely remain at Mount Carmel Area High School for another, another year, year at least. But everything we talked about in the beginning of this game, ladies and gentlemen, came true. We said that Schmoke and Area 1 we thought was a good football team. We felt they were upset. And, and, and when we take a look, we don't know how this Blue Mountain game ended, but they were giving... North Schuylkill a pretty good beating yeah. at halftime. So they're for real to start off with. And we felt that it was still an upset that Shemokin area probably should have won that game and come in here 3-0. and So a good football team, everything we thought they were going to be, just had some said some some rough penalties, I thought, on, on offense, which didn't help any. And, of course, that sequence where they took two 15-yarders in a row, right. which <clears throat> didn't, didn't help either. But defensively, 
I mean, Spears, and you looked at Coletta and, and those guys Dan on Lucio, the line down there, the big guys. Dan Jones, Chris Yoger. Right. Yeah, they, they played a solid defensive football game. They really mm -hmm. did. Sinkovich with the kickoff. Squibber picked up by Wetzel at the 10-yard line. Bailey has his sights Whoa. on him and tackles him at the 22. At that time, you weren't going to get away from Bailey. He was, he was lined up, squared up, and ready to go. Ball sits now on the on the Shimokin area, about 23-yard line, and you're under two minutes at a minute 53 remaining. Shimokin area, I assume, is going to throw the ball here in the last couple of minutes here and try to get something on the board. And we saw, you know, we saw some flashes here. We we, we look at this Chicatano kid, and he's a coach's son, of course. Right, freshman, freshman. Freshman. Nate. I tell you what, if you want to have a nightmare in the next couple of years, he's going to be it. There's a big kid with speed. I mean, he's going to be something to watch. Terry Meyer with the blitz. Gets Griffiths. Good read by Meyer, and he breaks right through there, helped out by Malakowski. <laughs> Meyer, Meyer gave the Denver Bronco <laughs> a salute there to the end zone. <laughs> he's, he seems to be bonding with that uh, <laughs> with the south the bleacher end zone. Creature. The bleacher creature. I think somebody creatures. ought to warn him, maybe being from Lordsy. <laughs> But I'll tell you what, you don't find a better bunch of fans down there oh. than they are. That's when, it, when a team's marching down there for a touchdown, it gets even uglier. And a great crowd all around. Shemokin area about a big crowd. And, of course, Mount Carmel area stands were filled. They were lined up in the end zones this time. Just another just great football evening. Clock running down at 118. This time, Cuff with the rush. Incomplete pass. And he, was, he was aiming at Chicatano, but he was being pulled down as he... As he threw it, in. and I'll tell you what, Griffiths, uh, he's slow getting up, but he's played a whale of a football game considering the pressure he was yeah, under. You're right. And Coach Williams had said, you know, last night at Supper Club, we talked about some of the kids we were going to look at. He, he was talking about the big kid, uh, the big fullback, uh, Rhodes. He was talking about uh, Spears, but he talked a lot about Griffiths, and he said here was a kid that he, he apparently had seen him in camp and said was really impressed with his skills and, and what he could do. Now, unfortunately, you could be uh, – Joe Montana or, or anybody else out there, but if there's three guys hanging on you, that's just the way it's going to be. But uh, he played a good game. I really do. I respect him. He took some, some vicious hits, and it's only now with the 106 remaining in the game that he's having a little bit of trouble there in that last hit. I think he got bent kind of backwards, so he's going to go off to the sidelines for at least one play, and the number two, Ed Buck, will be coming into the football game and playing quarterback and Ed Buck is a junior. Uh, what is he? 5'8, 150? Yep. When I was five, when I was a junior, I was 5'8, but I was, was 150. You were on never 150, were you? One side oh, okay. of was 150, and then the other side, you know, of course. <laughs> he never seen 150. No, right I, was, I was 150. <laughs> so somewhere between birth and now, I had to be 150. Oh, okay. It might have been only for a couple of minutes, <laughs> but I had to be. I mean, it's just like the law it says you got to be that. At some point on my way through. Chicote oh, fumble on the snap. Ooh. Threw out at Wetzel, almost intercepted by Chesney. You don't want to throw it to Chesney's side. You just don't want to do that. Had Fourth he, down, 17 yards to go. Had he thrown that ball perfectly, Chesney would have intercepted it. It was good he threw it too high. <laughs> Schmoken, of course, goes on fourth down behind 21-7. This is probably going to be the final time they see the football unless they can pick up 17 yards. And I believe Griffith still remains out of the game. Folks, he didn't come back in, did he? No. No. So number two is going to guide their last moment fortunes here. Going to try Farrow. Tackled by 60, Malakowski. And also 58, Mike Sinkovich. First down, Red Tornadoes, 57 seconds left on the clock. Now, Farrell, you know, Farrell's another guy. I mean, obviously against this defense, what, what did he do? You know what I mean? But I think he's a, he's a solid football player. He's got size. He's got some moves. I mean, I, he just never got any momentum. He never got – actually, he couldn't get past the line of scrimmage much to show you anything. But, again, there's some quality athletes there. This, this defense at Mount Carmel area, and, again, we keep saying and harping on it, but, I mean, I don't care. You're going to have to say it a million times. It may be one of the best defenses we've ever seen in our lifetime here, and, and they just get better every football game, so they're, they are just tough. Well, we have now seen four games with actually no points scored on the first, on, on the, well, yeah, you have to say it, because when it's from the one-yard line, it's a, it's a touchdown, oh, right? Yeah, that's, so. that's probably the first points there. 
against the, the defense. 43 seconds and counting now. Mount Carmel area will run one more play, take one more knee, and that'll be the end of the football game. For all intent and purposes, a good game on both sides of the ball. Excellent game. I, I'll Intense, tell you what, you know, this, this, this game here was probably the best that we've seen in about 10 years. Yeah. You know, yeah. That, that it went all the way down to the wire that, uh, you know, you didn't know who was going to pull it out. And both teams played excellent. 16, 15. Not a, a Winding one, down. We'll run another play here, folks. So. Cole Bucket being taken onto the field by the Red Tornadoes, given to them by their cheerleaders. And we'll watch on the field as it happens. Shimokan Indians congratulate the Red Tornadoes. What a great game. What this region is all about. You know, it, it just it's just what you wanted to see tonight. And, yeah. and a great hard game for the Indians and for the Red Tornadoes. Tough one to lose, no matter who you are in this oh, game. Yeah, yeah they play, everybody played tough. It was, it was a good football game all around by everybody. Uh, a clean game, you know, and, and this is the kind of game where emotions and everybody knows each other so well, where a lot of things can be out of hand, but it was just tough hitting, hard hitting football game. And, and it makes you, well, what you do is you watch a game like this and you say to yourself, geez, I can't wait till next year. And, and you know, now we travel down in, into Shemokin area, always a, just a notorious is. place to have to win a football game in Kemp Memorial. So you just begin looking forward to it already, you know, just as you end this game. So we appreciate everybody who watched us tonight. Again, we. We apologize that we're not showing you the, the games from Shemokin on a Thursday night, but unfortunately it's just out of our control right now. So we're glad you got to see it at least one time this year. Uh, we look forward now. We, we are 4-0, and and now the much-anticipated game that people have talked about since we parked them on the schedule, uh, Allentown Central Catholic Vikings. Uh, uh, we've I, seen them once <laughs> before. And I think what's going to shock everybody is that they're going to come up probably with 75 kids and they're going to be suited on the sidelines. You know that. We got, we got Jose down there. Okay, we got Jose Gonzalo on the sidelines right now. Okay, real quickly for Mount Carmel, not a great offensive night, just efficient enough to get the job done. 46 carries for 105 yards. Rushing, 5 of 10 passing for 78 yards, 12 first downs. Individually, Johnny Veach, 20 for 57. Al Bailey, 12 for 44. Nick Sebus, 11 for 10. Receiving Van Doren, two for 18. Johnny Veach, one minus two. Um, uh, Josh Paracello, one for 21. Al Bailey, one for 41. Uh, altogether, um, 183 yards for Mount Carmel. Defensively, it was just an awesome demonstration by Chink Connolly's defense. It was fantastic. 26 rushing plays, minus eight yards on the ground for Shimokin. Eight of 20 passing for 72 for a total of 80 yards and seven first downs. Real quick, and I'm not sure because I don't have my book handy, nine quarterback sacks would establish a new single game mark for defensive football in 100 years of Mount Carmel. I think we had two or three games with eight sacks in a game. This was nine. So a, re a real good effort by Mount Carmel tonight, guys. We talked about that, and we said it just appeared Shemokin had a scouted real well, and uh, and they, they, they had their defense ready to go against our offense, Jose. Yeah, they did. They came out real strong. They were obviously a very physical football team. I think it was a great test for us, especially to get ready next week for AAA Allentown Central Catholic, and I think, don't think we can be in a better position than we are. Right. We talked about it up here, Wayne, and we said that, and, and, and Jose, while we have you, was that this was the kind of game Mount Carmel really needed to go into that. You need to have a game like this, and it can only happen between Shimokin and Mount Carmel. It's that kind of game where you never know who's going who's gonna to put together a great game. You're right. I, Whitey talked about it the other night. He talked about the way the team was coming together and how they were really starting to do things and be together as a team. But the one thing that we didn't see yet until tonight was adversity. And 14-7, Backs up against the wall. They have the football. Our defense comes through, and we go back down and score another touchdown. I think that's exactly what he wanted to see, and I think it was great for Mount Carmel football. I agree, pal. I mean, this is all you do. All you do is watch a game like this. You don't really have to say anything about it. You watch it. You know what it's all about. We talked about it earlier, and we said, you know, already we're waiting for next year. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Well, yeah, you, you you're start right. thinking about Kemp Memorial before the game all, almost ends. So, well, I'm sure they're thinking about it too. That's you know, that's the, that's the great thing about this game, and yeah. it is a special game, and nobody can say that it isn't. Well, we're, we're going to look forward to another hundred years. I hope so. <laughs> I'm going to try to be there for it. <laughs> me, me too. <laughs> I don't know if I'll be, maybe I'll come up with you guys after then. 
<laughs> well, we'll go back and talk a little bit about Allentown uh, Central Catholic Vikings, and uh, yep. we're, we're, we're definitely have a quick team coming up here. It's well, yes. but back to the Delaware wing tee. We're well, going to see what Southern ran at us, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And the thing of it is, like we said, uh, you're going to see 75 players suited over there on the other side. And what they're going to do is they're going to platoon every team on. Punting team, kicking team, receiving team, offense, defense, you name it. You're not going to see guys going both ways. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we try not to look down the schedule, but, I mean, let's face it, we're all – human here you take right. a look at what the schedule has and, and we looked at what everybody was bringing and we said that we thought you know with southern we probably were going to have more speed than they could handle we, we knew the first two games we were probably going to win we knew that shimokin we had our fingers crossed because we never know what's going to happen when right. they come up and that proved out but we looked at allentown central catholic the vikings and they look to be probably the toughest team on the schedule right now now we're looking at cities grove at the end of the year they're having a fine year right now so it's it's hard to say that but if you're going to gear yourself to the tough game early, you're going to gear yourself to Allentown Central Catholic. The last time we saw them, ladies and gentlemen, those of you who remember it, was in Allentown in a playoff game. The last time that we were in District 11, in fact. Right. And if you can remember, the temperature was about 40 below zero. <laughs> and uh, we were a real young team. In fact, it was that team that went on to win a state championship two years later. But they, they taught us a little bit of a lesson up there and showed us what a, what a team with 80 kids on can do to you. So that's the, probably the biggest thing you're going to see next week is, one, they're going to be pretty quick, almost as quick as we are probably, and they're going to have a lot of kids to play. You're going to, as Wayne said, everybody's in and out of the game a lot, and they're going to be fresh. So our toughest test yet with the Vikings coming up. Well, that's it for the, from the Silver Bowl. The Red Tornadoes hold the coal bucket. I'm Bob Else. I'm Warren Altamar. Wayne Brokenshire. See you all next week.